First question. Nicotinic receptor, acetylcholine nicotinic receptor. Facilitation or inhibition of this synapse? Go ahead, Meg. Facilitation is correct. Now you have to tell me why, because I've only got you partial credit. Um, is it because the nicotinic receptor has equal permeability to sodium and potassium and there's an influx? Like, causing influx? Okay. So the nicotinic receptor has permeability to both sodium and potassium, which you use in your problem set, causing sodium influx, causing depolarization, and why does that facilitate neurotransmitter release? Uh, I don't know. Abby? Um, depolarization opens the open skin but So now we have two routes of depolarization. We've got the action potential depolarizing this terminal, and we have the nicotinic receptor, a chemical signal causing more depolarization. Action potential, which is big but very brief, and depolarization here, which is small but very long lasting compared to an action potential duration, that was summate. Spatial and temporal summation right here. More depolarization, more opening voltage gated calcium channels, more calcium influx, more binding to synaptic tagment, more neurotransmitter release, facilitation. I just said that very fast. Action potential, depolarization, summates with nicotinic receptor depolarization, more depolarization, more activation of voltage-gated calcium channels, more calcium influx, more calcium binding to synaptopagmin, more fusion, more neurotransmitter release is facilitation. Questions about that? If this receptor was a GABA-A receptor, and this neurotransmitter was GABA, would that cause Facilitation or inhibition of this neuron, of this uh, terminal, of this neurotransmitter release of this neuron. So this is not a question you worked on, but I think you should be able to process this in real time. GABA A receptor, GABA, what's the story? It would be inhibition because chloride influx would hyperpolarize. So now the depolarization of the action potential and the hyperpolarization caused by GABA A receptors, typically, you worked on that on the problem set. That summation, a positive with a negative, makes a smaller positive. Less depolarization, less calcium channel activation, less calcium influx, less synaptotagmin binding, less fusion, less neurotransmitter release. So you probably don't have time to write that all down, but you should be thinking, okay, we told the facilitation story and the inhibition story, one we went through slow and one we went through fast. Questions about presynaptic facilitation or inhibition, depending on this receptor and this neurotransmitter. Okay, let's talk about autoreceptors. The autoreceptor at the synapse is GI couple that is coupled to potassium channels. In the, in the problem set, did I ask you to work with GERC? Yeah, I did. These, these would be GERC channels, G-I-R-K channels. I, I asked you to work on this in the problem set. Is that gonna cause facilitation or inhibition 
Is there going to be autoreceptor dependent facilitation or inhibition of neurotransmitter release? Activation of potassium channels downstream from this receptor. Okay, Meg was brave. She, she volunteered an answer previously. Somebody else, some other brave person. I think you know the answer, you're just not brave. Henry. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but like I feel like if the if the potassium channels um, were open, that would um, cause like inhibition. Indeed, it would. Potassium channel activation, more potassium efflux out, hyperpolarization. You saw that on the problem set. Hyperpolarization, negatively summating with the depolarization less neurotransmitter release inhibition. Most autoreceptors are inhibitory. They're sort of a control, an automatic control. If you release a lot of neurotransmitter into this cleft, we don't want to release too much. We don't want to have excess activation. So these autoreceptors are sort of a, bra a, a breaking system on the release of neurotransmitters. But in principle, there could be autoreceptors that facilitate if they were not coupled to GI, but were coupled to GS. Possible, but not, not common. So questions about modulation of synaptic, synaptic release. Okay, so now I'm going to Ten fifteen. Let's take an actual break. I've been giving you I've been giving you breaks, but you have homework, you have work to do during the break. So let's take an actual break for five minutes, and but then we're going to transition from here directly into the next PowerPoint. Okay, so this is our break right here.